Hi, welcome to the Air Manager API tutorial video series. In this video, we're going to be looking at Map. So we're on the uh, Wiki API page uh, again, and you can see quite a few functions here listed under the uh, the Map heading. This first table relates to uh, the functions uh, to do with the map uh, base, the setting up of the base uh, layer for the map and, and the different uh, functions related to that. And then the next table here um, looks at the layers that you can apply over the top of that base map um, for showing uh, uh, image or text icons um, to represent uh, nav sources. These next couple of functions here that are in red at the, uh, currently are not actually available yet, so we're not going to be looking at them in this video. They're not coming until Air Manager uh, 3.6, so perhaps we'll look at those uh, in a later video. And then the last function here in this uh, table is just a visible one, which is uh, particular to these uh, layers. You can uh, show or hide these particular layers after you've initially uh, set them up um, on um, on top of the, uh, the the base map itself. You can see that the base map, you can still apply it. The base map is actually classed as a, as a node, so you can still apply the uh, the usual move, visible, opacity, and viewport rect um, to the map icon, uh, the map item. So let's go ahead and delve into uh, the code that we've got set up uh, for this uh, video. So we've got all of those functions hit from those uh, tables uh, in this example here. So I've got them all commented out mainly at the moment. And I've just left the, the very first one, which is the map add. That's all you need to actually get a, a map uh, to appear. Um, so first thing to say is that in our particular instrument where we've been using uh, for this uh, tutorial series, it's been, it was a 200 by 200 instrument. So for the purposes of this map, uh, video. I've upped the size of that instrument to 400, you can see there, by 400 high. So um, a 400 square. Um, so you can see in our, our map ad now, we've, we give it an ID, as is the usual uh, way um, with these Air Manager functions. You give it an ID so we can refer uh, to uh, this map later on if we want to manipulate it uh, with different um, functions. And we're going to give it the name map underscore ID. We're going to position it at zero zero because we're going to fill up the full uh, 400 pixel by 400 pixels of our instrument. We're going to make the map that four that full 400 by 400. We're going to use the OSM standard and we're going to choose a zoom level of 10. So if we just go back to the wiki page very quickly and go to the um, the map add um, function. You can see here some examples of what those different OpenStreetMap uh, types uh, look like. There's the standard, cycle, transport, and humanitarian. And it, it lists them out here. And you can also choose Neil in that this initial ad, so you'll just end up with a blank um, instrument. You won't get any actual base layer map, but it enables you to then refer to that map ID and specify one of these at some later point in your code if that's uh, what you need to do. And then here in the zoom level, you can see we can adjust that zoom level from one, which is uh, represents the whole of the Earth, um, down into a, a zoom level of 16, which is the closest uh, in tile that they have uh, on OpenStreetMaps. So let's jump back into our code again. So that's our that's our um, function there. We've chosen, as I said, the OpenStreetMap standard and the zoom level 10. So what we do is we'll go ahead and um, run that, and you can see what that looks like. So there's our um, OpenStreetMap standard uh, tile with a zoom level of uh, 10, and you can see it's centered uh, on Sim Innovations um, base in the Netherlands there. Um, because we haven't specified any other um, coordinates for the lat and the long there for where we want to look so at the map, so it uh, runs home to its default, I guess, um, and that is the uh, that is the default. But we're going to change that right now in the very next um, function, um, and we're going to say um, with this uh, map go to function. 
um, we're going to call our um, our map ID, which is what we uh, gave uh, to our map add in the very first place, and we're going to give it some different coordinates. Um, uh, you see we've got a longitude of uh, zero there. I'll explain what that's all about uh, in a minute. So we've chosen a, a lat of 51.4769 and a longitude of zero. There is some confusion over this lat and long a little bit with the information on the uh, wiki page. Let me just show you that very quickly, but hopefully uh, that will be cleared up by the time you get uh, round to uh, watch this video. And that is uh, with the go to here. You can see that's listed as long first and lat second. But when you click on the actual function for a little bit more detail, it's listed as lat first and long second. Now, I think that's probably come around in so much as that in earlier versions of Air Manager, it says here that um, Air Manager 2.13 and earlier have the lat and long arguments reversed. So I think they're, they're now lat and then long uh, in version 3 onwards. But in earlier versions, they were obviously uh, long and lat. And that's where the remnants of this has come from uh, here. So this is incorrect. The actual information when you click onto it is is right, so it's lat first and then long. So just thought I'd clear that up. So we've give it uh, the lat and the long there. So what we're head is we'd, we'll save that and go ahead and uh, save the instrument now. And you can see that that lat and long gives us a location of uh, London in the UK. Um, and um, zoomed in at the same zoom level of uh, level ten. Um, that we chose when we added the instrument. So what we're going to go ahead and do now is we're going to change the zoom level. So here I've set up uh, within the next uh, function is simply called map underscore zoom and you again you give it the map ID and you give it a zoom level uh, either 1 to 1 to 16 as you saw when we were looking on the uh, the wiki page. So I've chosen um, a variable name here called map underscore ZL, short for zoom level, and I've specified what that uh, variable is. Uh, we're going to say um, 8. So, in fact, let's go the other way. Let's go, um, let's go 14. So there we go. We've zoomed right in now because we're we're near, we're not quite at our 16, but we've zoomed right into 16. So we're down to quite a bit of detail now, and you can see now where this uh, this zero longitude uh, comes in. So a little bit of a mini history lesson, if you didn't know, um, when uh, it's referred to uh, GMT in aviation, uh, sh short for Greenwich Mean Time. This is where it gets the name from, the the place Greenwich. Um, in London, there is a Royal Observatory in Greenwich Park here, uh, which is the is the zero meridian line uh, of which Greenwich Mean Time is based on. So, hence uh, GMT Greenwich, um, it gets its name from the place uh, Greenwich in London. So, you may or may not have known that, but um, thought I'd mention that. I grew up not not far from here, so uh, that's why I chose that location. So that's the zoom. Um, again, you can obviously um, change that level and zoom out by quite a bit. You see quite a bit of the country now at zoom level 7. Yeah, big chunk of the southeast of the UK there at zoom level um, 7. We'll go back to zoom level 14 just to show how that works. And you can see you could play around with your uh, variable here and then just call this whenever that changes so that you could change your zoom level so you could almost scroll in and out of different zoom levels depending on uh, how you wanted your map uh, display or what you wanted it to display so the next one we got the next function we're going to look at is map underscore base layer and um, what that enables you to do is to just change that base layer that you specified in the original ad so we chose osm standard originally and we're going to uh, we've changed our mind we want to now look at uh, osm humanitarian so very simply you give it the map id again and you give it the, n the new uh, base layer that you want to uh, look at and there you go there's the osm humanitarian to look at um, the 
the nav layers that I uh, spoke about very briefly at the beginning. So what these enable you to do, these enable you to add uh, an image and some text to your um, instrument or, or to your map. So again, we've given it an ID here. We've, give it, we've called this one image layer ID and we use the function map add nav image layer quite long. We re these are referenced back to the map so you you need to have already created a map ID and and generated your base layer before you can use these uh, layer ones because they're linked to the map so they use the map ID so back to the original map ID and you can choose um, a different nav type um, that you want to display so you could have perhaps four of these for each of the four different types that you're allowed so you're allowed an NDB an airport, a VOR or a fix. I've chosen VOR for this example, but they're the four types that you can have. Then you um, choose an image that you'd like to display to represent that VOR. So I've drawn a little uh, VOR image um, and I've called it VOR.png. Again, that's located in the resources folder. And then here is a relative X and Y and a width and a height for that uh, image. So it's a very small image. Um, I'm gonna make it 14 pixels by 12 pixels and I'm going to use this relative position um, so it's a li I've literally what I've done is I've chosen half of the width being 7 and half of the height being 6 um, to uh, get the center of that image located on our, the center of our nav uh, point um, such that when the image uh, displays the, the center will be ex exactly on uh, where our manager has determined that the that is the, the center of the lat and the long position for that particular nav uh, type. So let's, we probably, what we could do is we could probably um, do with um, zooming out a little bit here. I'm not sure if there's, we're actually going to see anything here. So yeah, there you can see now we've um, zoomed out a little bit and these are my little VOR icons here. You can see them in a few different places here around. Let's try a level. Yeah, so there's one up here. Uh, there's another one, a big in here. I know that airfield. Uh, another one over there. So you can see there's the icon. Um, sort of useful. I think that's another one there. Um, not the clearest as in terms of what I've chosen in terms of a colour and image, but you get the idea there. Um, but there's no description about what that is, um, just that there's a VOR station at that uh, location on the map. So what you can do is you can now use a, a different function which is uh, map add nav text layer. Again, I've given it an ID here, the text layer ID. Uh, we may want to refer to that later. In fact, we do in, uh, in the example for the visible in a minute. Um, so very similar in terms of the name, except for it's text layer instead of image layer. Again, we give it the map ID. We're going to choose VOR again. Again, you, you get the four uh, types related to the same uh, four types as the as the actual image. So NDB, airport, VOR, or fix. Uh, this time, you uh, for the text element, you get to choose which piece of information from from the uh, nav type you actually want to display. So the the choices are name, longitude, or latitude. The obvious one to me seems that you'd you'd want to know what the name of that uh, station is. Um, so I'm going to choose name there and then as with normal text we give it a style so we, we say what font size color and uh, horizontal alignment we want to give it and we give it similar to the image we give it a width and a height so that's our text box if you like and this is our relative x and y position so that's relative to the um, the navigation uh, the center of the navigation point so not uh, canvas or instrument coordinates they are that is literally from wherever the center of the navigation point is that's saying because my text box is uh, I'm saying I want my text box to be 200 wide I'm saying I want to come back 100 from that so basically the text box is centered and then I've adjusted the Y such that my text appears underneath the uh, 
the image so they're co-located at the same uh, or almost co-located at the same location you could I suppose if you wanted to display the text to the right or above or to the left or however you wanted uh, so that's what those coordinates are for it's just a relation from the center point there so let's go ahead and uh, so there you go now we've got a text element on the, there uh, giving the name so there's Big and Hill um, Lambourne for the different stations so a little bit more information uh, for those and you can do that for the other ones as well the NDBs and uh, the airports and the fixes and then this last uh, function visible of course um, we've looked at that in previous uh, videos before we know what that does um, so what that will do is that will just show or hide um, the uh, the text layer ID that we've got here so I've chosen text layer ID so I'm looking at the text layer there but I've been a little bit clever here and I've said rather than just say a true or a false just to show you it turning on and off just give an example of perhaps what you could do here is if you wanted to declutter a, a map uh, as as real world uh, units um, give you the uh, option to do it different zoom levels you can turn certain things on and off so that they don't appear because too many of them might appear at a certain zoom level so here I've just said um, show it if the map uh, ZL uh, variable is greater than 8 so if there's if we've set the zoom level whichever whatever we're using to set this zoom level is greater than 8 um, then it will show um, the uh, the name here but if not don't show it so if we were to change our zoom level say for instance to 7 it shows the image because we haven't done anything with the image we could do it with the image as well if we wanted to uh, but we've chosen to turn the text off so it declutters our map a little bit and then of course if we were to come back up to uh, zoom level 9 whoops what did I do there there we go so uh, it comes back so yeah as you adjust the zoom level you could use something like this to turn on and off but I will say these layers they are quite resource hungry so uh, just be careful when you're using them um, when you've got um, uh, when you're zoomed right out and you've got lots and lots of information in there it can be quite a drain uh, on your system but have a play around with that and see how you get on with that so I think um, there's obviously some functions to look at in some later versions of uh, Air Manager uh, as with uh, some of the other navigation uh, functions uh, but I think that concludes this video uh, for the moment for uh, where we are in Air Manager at, at the time being um, have a play around with it as I said and see how you get on thanks for watching catch you again next time thanks bye